Hello and welcome <laughs> to this virtual bridge session. And it's been a while. It has been a while. It's literally been weeks. And I've, I've been sitting frantically in this room talking to myself all that time. So it's nice to have other people in the room for once. <laughs> and especially Stephen, you today giving up a day to, to come and speak to us about really an area of fascination for me assessment. I, I love assessment. I've never been very good at assessment in the sense of just the scores I get. But you know, I'm still fascinated by it. And you've raised this interesting question of what's going to happen to paper based exams as we go forward. So I'll leave it to you to explain. All right, Kenji, thank you very much uh, for your introduction there. And uh, thank you everyone for coming. It's always uh, lovely when you give a presentation and you see people coming along, giving up their time. And uh, certainly I appreciate it. So let me just get into presentation mode. Maybe just give me a thumbs up that uh, uh, you can see that and uh, uh, hear me. There we go. Oh, we're jumping ahead. There we go. Are we ever going back again? Okay. So um, I'm based at Edinburgh Napier. What I'm going to do in this presentation, and keep me to time, Kenji, is um, we're going to describe how our centrally administrated open book exams have become a kind of business as usual um, over the last uh, two years. Uh, we'll have a, a little bit uh, of a look at some of the issues uh, that have arisen, and then a, a speculative look at the future of exams. I have to set the expectations. We've not made a decision here at Edinburgh Napier, but it is a fascinating topic uh, to look at uh, the different formats and some of the subtleties that brings in around assessment design, et cetera, et cetera. So, well, we'll get to that. Let's uh, just, just crack on then. Um, so... Just to set the scene uh, a little bit, um, this is what we, this is our current uh, exams set up. We have four main diets every year. Our main ones are in December and May, trimester one, trimester two. Uh, you can see the, the number there, 100 exams, uh, you know, 6,000 students, you know, that, that kind of figure there. Um, then in trimester three, we, we've only got seven exams, but they're big modules. Uh, so there's a large number of students uh, involved there. And we're currently uh, doing our reassessments. In fact, they just started yesterday, so uh, it's kind of all hands on deck at the moment. So the reassessments are a large number of exams, but uh, a relatively small number of students. So there's quite a bit of working set in those up because there's, it doesn't really matter how many students are involved in the setup. It's really the number of exams we have to set up. So um, that's just to, to set the scene uh, of our four, four diets uh, kind of every year. So what happened then, of course, the, uh, the institution uh, closed its buildings uh, back in March uh, 2020. Uh, exams were only six weeks away. And as you can imagine, it's the same for everyone up and down the country. <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, my God. Um, so the decision was taken that we'll, we'll proceed with online exams uh, for anyone who is going to be directly um, affected with an exit decision. So we had to focus on those who were going to be graduating this year. They needed to do an exam. They need to get a result in order to graduate. So uh, that was the, the focus on postgrads and finally your undergrads. So that might be fourth years or maybe third years, whoever, whoever was exiting. And so it kind of totaled around 150 exams. You know, there's 6,000 odd uh, kind of students. Now we were originally just going to allow academics just to manage their own submissions just in our regular Moodle. Um, just under general coursework conditions. So yeah, I wrote a couple of guys, there you go. And then um, my, my colleague within IS is thinking, do you know, actually, I think we might build a, a little separate server for this. So all oh, right, okay. And well, you know, we thought it was just going to be a one-off, but uh, no, <laughs> it's, uh, it's become a business as usual. So yeah, the decision was taken. We're going to we're going to build this uh, technical solution uh, based around Moodle and uh, in a centralised uh, exam kind of kind of process. So many things just kind of remain the same. Uh, there's a number of teams involved. We want to keep things centralised. I mean, the, part of that's Edinburgh Napier's culture. We do tend to do things very centralised, uh, and uh, it's, you know it's a very collegiate university for that. Too. We all the professional services all work very well together. So I think it's you know it's it's something that we could do. So we've got the the, the central exams team. We you know it's really important that they keep um, um, remaining close to this transition. They're they're the experts in all aspects of of delivering exams. Uh, and, and all the various issues uh, that arise. So we had to keep them uh, very much involved and work very closely together. 
And it's been great working in information services to you know connect with a, a set of colleagues that we not necessarily have uh, worked very closely with before. Uh, so that's been really good. And there's a, the exam papers are all produced locally still, and they are producing them. Okay, it's not paper format, but they are producing you know Word documents. Um, there's a lot of liaison still goes on between the school administrators, the, the examiners, the external examiners, the professional bodies, that all still you know, occurs. There's no, there's no change there. And they still need to produce a, um, a paper with a cover sheet. It's all in a standard format um, and so on. We've also got a student systems team. We make every effort to try and uh, timetable these to spread exams. Um, you know, we really want to avoid, you know, you've got five exams and you're, they're all in one week. Although when I was an undergraduate, I did have five exams all in one week. And I do remember my very last exam on a Friday and I actually stayed up all night cramming for this exam. And I think it went OK, but uh, it's, it's not really. Well, we're going to touch on that actually uh, later on. So I'll come back to that bit. Um, we've also got well-being and the support who uh, doing that usual task, the very important task of uh, assisting those students uh, around that disability inclusion, things like extra time, scribes, uh, and, th and those kind of things. So, you know, th that all remained uh, still very much the same. But what we did um, th that's different is, you know, we built a Moodle server. We're, we're a Moodle institution. We've got multiple Moodle servers. Uh, unfortunately, we've got a, a team within there who can get a server up pretty quick. Um, the way it was set up, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but essentially it was a, a course for each exam. Uh, there's an assignment tool, you know, which is a, you know, essentially just a, a Dropbox uh, with a Turnitin plugin as well. Um, and a consistent set of instructions for students. And, I'll, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of come back to that. It wasn't timed uh, as such. Um, the, that tool doesn't have a countdown timer. So that again, that's good. That, that is different. Um, what else? We wanted to lock down the server as well. Normally a middle server, we've got all sorts of plugins. You know, we're trying to make it, uh, you know, that you can see who's online, et cetera, et cetera. But here we wanted uh, to, to lock all that down. You can't see grades, you can't see participants, restricted blocks. But also we, uh, our institution, we have um, lots of school administrators and, and lots of devolved role permissions. So again, we had to kind of to allow those who are supporting the exam process with, that, with access to see the submissions uh, and so on. Um, alongside that then is uh, a, a data process for creating courses and, um, and, giving, and giving students access. Um, so we, that needed to target eligible exams and candidates. And again, this is quite an interesting change because normally with paper-based exams, we don't actually have a list to say, here's who we're expecting to sit an exam. In fact, if you're an accountancy student, so long as you've got a card, you could go up and sit an engineering exam. <laughs> Why would you want to do that, of course? But um, we don't have that centralised list. So it was quite interesting that when we give students early access to the exam server to let them check that they've got access to exams, they're suddenly now seeing a bit of a list and then they're interpreting that saying, oh, am I meant to be uh, sitting this exam now? Well, I thought I sat that last year. So, you know, th th this took a little bit of doing, actually, because we needed to make sure that we weren't unenrolling people as well from previous submissions and then losing the connection between their account and their marks and so on. So uh, that was a, um, a a very important aspect was that um, that enrollment uh, process. So yeah, it was the first time them kind of seeing a list, uh, an unofficial list as it were. Um, and th those lists of course are, are generated by our e-student record system uh, and the data in there. So there are real, um, need for accurate data. Um, so like I say, we tried we had a, we had a, a ring fenced um, enrollment process for each diet to kind of keep them kind of discreet and so on. Um, also uh, a close liaison with the, with, with the school administrator. So, you know, just a, it's basically a SharePoint site. I mean, there's nothing uh, particularly special about that, but it was really just a point where everyone can have visibility of all the uploaded exam papers into SharePoint with a little um, workflow that, um, you know, initially when it was the learning technology team who were creating the exams, we can say, yeah, we've, uh, well, well, the exams team could say, yeah, the dates are fine on the, on the exam script. It matches what we've got on the timetable. And then we'll proceed and upload the exam, 
you know, create all the conditions within that Moodle course. And then we can say, yeah, that one's ready. So that was really a, a nice little workflow, which has it's changed a little bit uh, as we've gone from subsequent diets, because we thought we were only going to do this once and we're now in our sixth kind of diet. So things have kind of had to evolve um, a little bit. So, yeah, like I was saying, the for the first time that we ran it in, in uh, March, oh, I can see I've got the dates wrong. Uh, it was 9th March. I've got the dates completely wrong there. <laughs> it was March um, uh, 2020, of course, when we... Now, in, here the students were given a two-week window um, to, to submit their exam. And the decision around that, of course, is, you know, well, we were in a lockdown situation. Students were all over the world. We had um, uh, no control over the environment that they were working in. Um, obviously, they, they could be in very disruptive um, environments and we wouldn't be able to sit for three hours, you know, uninterrupted um, with all the various um, uh, obligations that, that they may have. So they, with a two week window, they can jump in and out of the document. Um, but it's interesting. It doesn't matter how long you give a student uh, to sit an exam. <laughs> they will submit it at the deadline whether it's a two week deadline or, or, or something shorter. So um, yeah, whatever you define that, that that's uh, when they're going to su submit. Um, student, uh, what have we got here? Uh, so now what we've done, now when we moved out of the kind of lockdown situation and, and the restrictions were easing, in the subsequent diets then, the decision was taking that uh, you get double the normal exam time for everybody. It's like a mainstreaming of reasonable adjustment. So if your exam is three hours, it's actually, you've got six hours. And that includes then the time in which you've got to upload and deal with any technical issues. So we're taking quite a hard line to say, well, look, you've got six hours. You know, If you leave it till five to the deadline, then before you start the upload process, then you do run the risk. Um, and unfortunately that does happen. Um, there's a couple of Moodle quirks in how you how you set this up. We did have students who would often leave their um, uh, submission in a draft status, uh, and that can be missed then by the examiner. It doesn't generate a turn it in report as well because it was kind of a two stage process. You kind of upload your your answer document, and then you then you have to um, do a final submit. So before you do the final submit, you can make changes. And so for for instance, uh, and you can upload more files. So so. Some students would be, if uh, if it's a typed exam, then that's fine. It's generally, you know, they were just asked to create a, a, a document, a, a, a kind of Word document or a, a, t a text document, you know, of their own um, uh, format, you know. But uh, sometimes there's handwritten stuff. Uh, so the students would be allowed to take photographs and upload photographs as well. So there could be multiple uploads. I mean, we tried to get them to put it into the same document. Uh, but um, again, there's the, the things you just can't predict that are going to happen. Of course, often when people take photographs and they're, they're massive photographs, and so the, the Word document suddenly becomes this huge 100 megabyte document and Turnitin doesn't like that. So uh, quite a few unforeseen things. You know, students would use Mac pages as well, which um, academics then couldn't, couldn't mark because um, they don't have a Macintosh. So we'd end up having to go use a, an iPad and convert that to a PDF and going to re-upload it. So yeah, there was uh, quite, quite a few fun and games uh, around that. Um, what have got here? Uh, this is usual. Uh, let's see. Yeah. No, it's interesting. We, we double the normal exam time. So this is about mainstreaming reasonable adjustments. An interesting observation, though, was that from, from some of the students who are used to getting extra time, they kind of queried, it's like, but everyone's getting the same time, right? And it's like, yeah, everyone's getting the same. Everyone's getting, you know, double the time, but but shouldn't I be getting more time than others? It was like, no, what we're, what we're doing here, it's, uh, you know, it's about universal design. It's about, you know, being fair and equitable to everyone. But it was just interesting that uh, at first, uh, the students were kind of, oh, uh, it took a bit of adjusting to, I think, uh, that perception. Um, for the first couple of diets, it was myself uh, and my team that would um, create all the exams. Uh, we would process any stuck submissions um, and deal with uh, basically any issues. But uh, with, it, with each subsequent diet, 
we, the exam team have, have been upskilled uh, as they've become much more confident in Moodle because they were not Moodle users at all. So they've taken more ownership um, uh, around that. Uh, and that's been uh, really positive. Um, okay, just uh, some of the further um, observations here. I think I've already mentioned around um, uh, student formats. Um, ownership of the exam. Yeah, this is quite interesting because normally in paper-based format, when the exam is submitted by the examiner, it's a bit of paper, there it is. It can no longer be edited. When it's in Moodle, of course, the perception of, of Moodle amongst academics, and it's the same in every institution around the VLE, it's theirs. Uh, we can change stuff. And uh, yeah, that was happening. They would not necessarily change the exam, but they would adjust certain things to just to suit themselves. But of course, it's the exams team that have to deal with any of the queries around that. So there's probably going to be a little bit of move as the exams team have come um, more, more experts, and well, not experts, <laughs> probably they wouldn't forgive me for using that word, um, but more familiar with Moodle um, will probably begin to lock down um, the ability really for, for the academics to, to change things because we, we need to keep things fair uh, and kind of equitable. Um, it was interesting actually in the first year, even though we had four diets, and by I think. The, the, by the summer and, and, the, and the, the restrictions were easing, we still kept the two week window because for a whole academic year, we wanted to keep that, um, um, the, just make it the same. You know, if that was your conditions under trimester one, same under trimester two, same under trimester three and so on. So um, now around feedback, of course, Moodle, and your VLE is a fantastic tool for providing uh, feedback. But we never give feedback on final exams. And there's a whole range of issues uh, uh, of reasons why that, why that is the case. Um, but because it was suddenly on Moodle, uh, many of the academics saying, right, I'm, I'm ready to release my marks. Uh, but despite the communications that we were saying, well, actually, this exam server is for submission only. It is not for giving feedback because that has not changed. We're still in, a, in an exam situation. I know it's not supervised, but um, many of the conditions are still exactly the same. Uh, so what that resulted in was some academics just changing their assessment and say, well, actually, I, I don't really need a, uh, a centralised exam. I'm, I'm just going to do this as a coursework and so on. But not necessarily changing the questions, but I'll come to that in just a moment. All right, so that, that's kind of what, what we did. Uh, I'm just checking my time. I've got about, what, five, 10 minutes maybe, uh, Kenji. Um, so I think I'm just gonna um, have a look at um, just some of the things around uh, paper-based exams, computer exams, and academic integrity. And then we'll, we'll, I'll finish um, uh, on that. Um, so our paper-based exams are, are, are formally supervised. They're, they're closed book, and as you know, that is a focus on kind of memory recall, and that's not to do down memory recall. It's an extremely important aspect of assessment, particularly in certain disciplines. You know, in, in medicine, it's a, a huge part uh, of the assessment process. Um, might not be at the top of, uh, you know, the Bloom's taxonomy, but it's still extremely important. Um, but uh, over what time period do you want to test memory? Often the exams are, are right at the end of the, um, of the trimester. So you're testing memory you know, across that whole trimester, or if you do it um, you know, throughout the trimester, are you testing memory over you know, smaller and smaller periods? So you know, there's, there, there's something to, to think about there. Um, it also means that you're... Uh, you're congested in terms of your revision. Everyone's cramming. We try and spread the exams out, but you know you may find you're going to have exams, you know, one after the other. You know, maybe one or two. Um, and this whole notion of um, setting an exam time. I remember being uh, in a meeting uh, when we were talking about the mainstreaming of uh, of reasonable adjustments and giving everybody the same time. But how do you pick a number? Uh, what constitutes a three-hour exam or a two-hour exam? Where where does that that time come from? And um, what is it indicating then if you are assessing under time pressure? You know, how realistic is that uh, in real life? Now, I think you could argue that putting people under pressure is going to give you some insight into their, you know, their person, I don't know, their, vit their, vi their vitality, their vital statistics, for want of a better word. But it's uh, perhaps not uh, that, that realistic. Um, good things about paper-based exams. We know it's them. They've, they've showed us their card. They've handed it in. 
and uh, you know it's very difficult then to um, you know take the exam on, on behalf of someone else. Um, and everyone has the same opportunity. So by that I mean you're all in the same conditions. You know you're all sitting there in the same exam hall. You've got no other materials. You've got the same time. Um, so it's very fair that way. They are easy to organise, but uh, goodness me, it's a big paper uh, transport exercise as well. Think about kind of computer-based exams. You know, we've got both the supervised and um, you know unsupervised formats. Um, you know, I'm really when we're thinking ahead, we're, 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 we're well, we could do both. We, we we've tried supervised um, computer exams before. That is, students coming into a com big computer lab and uh, sitting down, logging in, and then they've got a time, uh, you know, pressure there to, to, to complete it. You know, but that needs a lot of infrastructure, needs a lot of resources. And, um, well, <laughs> when we first had our VLE, um, I don't know if this, this was WebCT campus edition, this is going back to something like 2005. And, of course, everyone's excited. We're trying to show how well it can, um, how well technology can support all aspects of learning and teaching, including summative assessment. Oh, goodness me, um, the, the issues very quickly uh, became uh, apparent. And actually, we, we moved away uh, and took a step back. Our institution, we just felt we weren't uh, really geared up for that supervised uh, computer-based exams. And I'm talking about generally the multiple choice type um, one, you know, just, just through the VLE. Um, Okay, so I'm really think a bit more then about open book exams because that effectively is what we've got um, right now. So in contrast to memory recall, you know, it's open book is more reflecting kind of natural situations where you've got access to resources and then you're then going to interpret, critique them, use them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and if the exam has been designed that way, then the, the exam itself is a learning experience. You know, you, you've got some new information, you've got your resources, and you know, you're coming up with something new. So there is, you know, there's learning in there as well. Um, I think there is a question there, though, that unless your exam is designed that way, um, are all students equally equipped to do that research piece? and interpret and critique these resources. That's a very different thing then for, from memory recall, isn't it? So are all students equally um, e equipped that way? Um, and the question is, are your exams having been um, designed for a, a closed book and you just put up the same exam, you know, are you really taking advantage? Uh, are you, really, are you um, uh, rewording your exam to take advantage of the open book format? Um, there is a fair bit of research actually around um, the use of uh, typed answers and uh, comparing that with um, um, handwritten exams. Um, you know, my son, uh, you know, he he qualified for a um, for a reasonable adjustment there and was given a laptop. I mean, his handwriting is something to behold, and um, I always felt he was at an advantage then by having access to a laptop. But when I started looking into this, um, well. It depends how comfortable you are typing, but the, it seems to be that typed answers you know, tend to have higher word counts. But then there's a different approach then before you start writing. If you're going to handwrite something and you'll know yourself when you're writing a letter or if you're even if you're writing a card, you, you start, don't you? And you think, right, I'm writing here. You know, there's no uh, uh, control Z to edit and undo. <laughs> you know, it, once it's written, it's written. So there's something there around the, the planning and, and the thinking about your answers before you start writing. Uh, whereas if you're typing, well, probably more words and quite a lot of rewording uh, is taking place as well as you kind of chop and change and, you know, kind of footer around with it a little bit that way. So a, a few um, uh, things to consider there when we're, when we're if we continue with open book format, although maybe in a supervised um, um, arrangement. Just on my last slide then, really, just a, is, is a looking at uh, academic uh, integrity. So currently what we do is um, the answer document is submitted to Moodle. It's just a standard Moodle assignment. So that means we, we've got their responses. One of the problems we had when we were running are in back in the early days of supervised computer-based exams, if the computer froze, uh, we were in big trouble because it was very difficult you have to get the student responses by hook or by crook. So, so long as we've got them, 
then you know at least we can mark and so on. So we don't have a dependency on Turnitin. We send a copy to Turnitin for the originality checking, but if Turnitin goes down, which it does, uh, any external service will go down at some point and guaranteed it will go down when you don't want it to. Um, so it's very important that we have that kind of local collection still uh, of, the, of, of the exam paper. Um, thinking about invigilation, um, in, in, in the paper-based uh, situation, you, you know, you've got this invigilator walking up and down the road. They probably don't do that because it's very distracting. Um, but in a computer-based exam, um, are our invigilators geared up to notice um, potential switching of applications, you know, using Alt and Tab? Um, now, I know you could use lockdown browsers um, to, you know, to lock down, restrict them, but maybe then you're also restricting access to the applications you do require for that exam. So there's a little bit of thinking uh, to be done around uh, invigilation skills um, and, and how we um, kind of maintain, how we, how we restrict access. Again, back in the day, we were having to use separate logins uh, so that students only had access to Moodle. And honestly, you know, you, you would give them a slip of paper saying, this is your login, and they would look at it and just put it away and just log in with a regular ID. So the logistical issues were very challenging. Um, originally, uh, originally checks I've done. Okay, I'll talk a, a bit about proctoring really as uh, kind of my last point. So by proctoring, what, what we mean here is um, a facility on the computer that the student is using um, that will use their webcam and record, either record what they're doing or, or allow uh, an invigilator or an examiner to observe them while, while they're doing that. Um, Respondus Lockdown Browser is probably one of the well-known ones for uh, those of us with uh, VLEs. But there's all sorts of uh, issues around that. Huge privacy issue for a start. Now, it, obviously, when we're using an external company, we go through the privacy checks. Where's the data held? How's the data processed, et cetera, et cetera. But for an exam situation, and you, if you could imagine you've got a webcam here, you can see my background, but students are very uncomfortable. Um, with uh, that kind of um, surveillance, you know, surveillance anxiety, you know, is, is, is definitely something that uh, is, is an issue there. Um, you know, you may have people wandering into view. Um, you can see the environment. A lot of students are just not, do not want that to be recorded. And then how long is it going to be there for? Who's got access to it? When's it going to be deleted? Um, et cetera. Um, and then on the um, equality side of things, you know, I've been reading quite a few reports that uh, some of these proctoring softwares uh, struggle they, when, when they're using facial recognition to, to, to um, identify who is taking the exam, then it can struggle. Some students with disabilities might have um, non-standard non head movements, for instance, and that might be flagged up um, as an issue. Uh, certain dark skin tones um, can cause a problem as well. Um, and then there's the IT side of things. And, um, you know, it, it requires the students to install something. And um, it's not always the case. Sometimes students are borrowing laptops from the institution without the uh, administrative um, uh, permissions to do that. Chromebooks are being heavily promoted. And, we, you know, we've had quite a few issues uh, with, with support for that particular application. So we're reliant actually on the proctoring vendor to provide that kind of support. So invigilation remotely is, is, is challenging. And um, yeah, I'm not sure that's a, a route we're gonna go back to. So are we ever gonna go back to paper-based exams? Well, I did set the expectations, Kenji, right at the start that, well, we don't know. Um, I think it's, um, there's not a great appetite, I don't think, to go back to the, the paper-based exams, but, I think I've covered quite a few of some of the discussion points around there. There's, there's a whole lot in there about redesigning assessment, if it's going to be open book, um, about infrastructure, if it's going to be um, by computer, in, in so that it's maybe very similar to what we're doing now. It's just you use Word or whatever processor, upload it into Moodle, and then off you go, but you just do it on campus and it's in a supervised environment. Well, you need a big infrastructure uh, for that and so on. So are we going back? I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, but maybe there's enough there in this presentation just to spark a bit of a discussion, which I think is more interesting than what I've been covering here. So um, 
there's a few articles. There's only three there that um, there's lots of stuff there around um, handwriting, comparing that with typing. Edinburgh's done some good work around that. Um, just uh, an article there around open book exams and nice plug pros and cons and uh, just some little internal document there from Napier around alternatives to traditional traditional exams. So I'll stop there, Kenji, and uh, yeah, I hope we can have a, a bit of a chat around that. Right. <laughs> So many questions, which is kind of appropriate for assessment, really. <laughs> um, that's great. Th that's all we actually have time for for this recorded part, <laughs> the virtual print session. I feel I feel people's pain as they get to the recording and they go, "This is the discussion. This is the bit where people are going to ask really interesting questions," and and that's where we cut them off. But you know, <laughs> for the rest of us here in the room, we'll continue the discussion for you in YouTube land. I'm sorry. Apologies. Please join us for the next session. But until then, as always, stay safe. <laughs>